Hey, greetings everybody. Welcome back to Zero Calvin. So today I'm going to be just goofing around, kind of like I normally do, uh, playing with different settings. Um, what we're going to be doing specifically though is looking at the compositing elements uh, of the iRay render plugin for iClone and Character Creator. So by default, you know, you guys probably know iRay is a good way of making uh, superior images to the real-time render engine and also at the same time eating up uh, lots of electricity and time and creating lots of heat. So in the summertime it's a wonderful way, I mean in the wintertime it's a wonderful way of heating your house and in the summertime it's a wonderful way of, um, you know, making you sweat to death and melting your computer down. But yeah, you can see here, so this is the real-time render engine, this is the uh, iRay. And you know, yeah, IRA looks better. Is it necessarily worth um, going from one second to create this to mm, five or ten minutes? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But that's not really what we're here to discuss. What we're here to discuss today are the other outputs you can create with the IRA renderer. So in addition to, you know, nice looking images, we can create other outputs that we can use as masks or mm, other things for special effects in post-processing. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, in the IRA render plugin, in the render settings uh, sub-tab, you have this lovely thing called compositing elements. And if you expand that out, you'll see by default it's outputting RGB, which is this, the normal image that you're looking for. But we have all these other groovy little things here that we can select. And what do these things do? Well, I'll show you. Like I said, they're mainly used for different purposes uh, for post-processing. Uh, say you wanted to separate all your objects out. We can uh, select Object ID and deselect the RGB now instantly you get a uh, you get different colors for each of the different objects in your scene. So our person is you know one color, and you don't really have to worry about the colors so much. Um, the reason being they're they're made to be masks. So you can use this later on to just mask out, say, a certain color if you wanted to do some sort of special effect that involved. Um, changing this section of your image in some specific way, like making it, uh, you know, op uh, making it uh, transparent or something where you'd see the background, but just on a certain part of your image, things like that. Or you could make it darker or lighter or whatever your heart desires. You can use these as masks later on. So, you know, and I'm assuming, hopefully if you're watching this, you have a little bit of knowledge of, say, Photoshop, or in my case, I use PaintShop Pro. Or you can also do this with video images as well. So in your video imaging, uh, video editing software, you can muck around with this stuff. So this has its uses, but there are other cool maps that might be even more interesting to us right now. So I'll go through each of these maps and uh, save them, and we'll look at each of of what they output, but let's let's look at depth first. We'll just go down the line here. So by default, you're going to get something that looks like this, I think, or mm, yeah, I think by default you get something that looks like this out of it. I forget what the default setting is here. Um, you may get a blank black screen like I did, you may get nothing, but what this is, is it's a depth map. So you need to, um, you need to adjust it to get the, the proper thing. So what I would normally do is you could set far all the way up and near all the way, actually wind this down. till you 
start to see things almost all the way disappear and then you can crank this up until you see the near ones turning white and you can just adjust accordingly and to what you're trying to do so once you get uh, pretty close you can just start clicking these along here normally you don't want it oversaturated so you'll see um, you know after a while as I, if, I, if I'm cranking this up you'll see it just a whole section start to turn white probably don't want that but it depends on what your final image is going to be so I'm just going to make this oops I'm going to crank this up to about like this I think where Something about like that. So there's two different maps that are very similar, you'll see. Or I keep calling these maps, but they're really not. There's two different outputs, layers. Two different layers that uh, look very much alike. You'll see depth and you'll see distance. You'll see that if I uncheck this guy, check distance, he looks pretty much the same as the other one. See, watch if I deselect this one, it'll change ever so slightly. You'll see if you watch towards the legs or something, if I go to the distance one, it'll get a little bit darker. And that's because my, I believe how this works is the depth is, well, we'll start with distance. So the distance would be the, it's a map of the distance from any of these points that you're looking at to the camera lens. So that's easy enough. So, you know, things that are below and or farther away or above or out over in the edges are going to be black. And anything that's closer to the center or closer to the camera are going to look brighter. So with depth, it's a little bit different than that because the depth is um, if you were to put a plane in front of the camera, a plane of infinite size, and then you mapped out the closest distance from uh, the object to anywhere on that plane, so right angles directly to the plane, um, then you'd get this map. So it's a little bit, it's just like a, an absolute distance or, you know, it's a, it doesn't take into account the angle. Uh, effect, you know, um, I think you would call that the cosine effect or whatever of the of the distance from where the camera lens is in space to things that are like above or below or beside it. Instead, it just cares about the the depth, as the name is says, away from the camera. So, yeah, that's the difference between the two. Uh, so let's like just check a look to that. Let's just take a look at these other maps real quick. So you get a normal map, and again, I'm going to call these maps, but just forgive me because they're really not maps. But the normal image, and you get this groovy-looking thing, and uh, I, I, this is I, really it's it's a map showing the direction of the the way the normals are facing, I believe. Uh, in other words, the surface of the the object. So anything that's pointing like in a certain direction is going to be a certain color. And uh, it changes in three different dim dimensions, of course. So yeah, normal map, probably not super useful for us, mm, you know, Cretans who don't know what to do with it, but it does have a kind of a cool effect and maybe you can do something with it. Um, mix it in with your base image to make it look a little like a Martian or something. Who knows? Have fun, but just so you know it exists. We also have material ID. So material ID is similar to, um, so material ID is gonna create a mask for every single different material that's in our picture. So you'll note that, you know, head, body, 
arms, and you can't see them, but legs would be different colors for our uh, character, as well as nails and eyelashes, because they are different material zones. Um, if that's not really what you want, you can actually use um, object ID instead. So this will just be each object gets its own different color and you can of course mask these. Um, so that's those things. Let's look at the di diffuse. So the diffuse is just the base color of the object. Um, so this is This is the base color of the thing if it were exposed to white light. Not, so in other words, the color of the, of the object not being influenced by the color cast of its environment, I guess. So you could use this diffuse along with these other maps and you could theoretically build, rebuild your RGB you know, your normal output from it, and you can mix them in different ratios to post-process, you know, to create a image um, just like the original, but you can actually adjust things like the, say, how specular highlights and the glossiness and things like that in post-processing. So it's kind of cool. So I haven't really experimented with that, but just know that it exists. You also have a glossy output map thingy majiggy. So this is just everything that the the more shiny something is, the whiter it is in this map. There's also color information that's coming through, which is kind of interesting, um, like on lips and apparently the buttons and stuff. Um, so it's yeah, it's like it's like all the reflections for lack of better words, that's in your image. So this is gonna be a cool uh, layer mask for us to play with because we can use it to really highlight reflections and things like that. Alpha, simply a simple mask for the whole image. It just separates the objects from the background in the image. So this may be super handy if you've outputted something or you have an output of something and it's uh, you didn't do the you didn't you have a background and you want to cut the background out you know that's basically what it's used for so you got alpha we've already done the distance you got texture uv um i know what uv is you probably know what uv is as far as uv mapping what you would use this for, I'm not entirely sure, but it exists and it's pretty cool looking, I guess. Um, it's, it's sort of similar to our uh, normal map. It's that same kind of philosophy, I think, but broken down per material. I don't know. Interesting. I'm not educated enough to know what you would use this for, but it's cool. Uh, object ID, we've looked at that. Um, specular. So specular are uh, like reflections in a way. So for whatever reason, we only have our eyeballs that are uh, specular highlights right now. I don't know why, but hey, if you needed your eyeballs, like for some of these other things, <laughs> there's your eyeballs. <laughs> Sometimes it'll be good to mix them back in because some of these effects don't show the eyeballs very well. So yeah, there's your eyeballs. And you have an emission map, which again, I'm calling it a map or emission image. Uh, again, it's black because we don't have any emission. So this would be for anything that you have set as an emissive surface. You know, if you had a light that was, uh, you know, you had something that had an emissive map that was actually generating, supposed to be generating light. 
like a little LED or something. So that would show up here, but we don't have any misses in this image, so it's just black. So with that said, I am going to go through and save all these, and then we'll have some fun with them in a minute. Okay, so I've saved the, diff the different output choices, and it is worth noting that not all of them are instant. So um, diffuse still takes time to render just like you would do RGB. Um, what else? The glossy is the same. And the, I think there was one other, the spec, no, yeah, the specular also takes time. This looks like a big black screen, but remember those were the eyeballs because they had a specular highlights on them, I guess. Um, so those three, I think, take time. Uh, things like the depth and distance, uh, normals, material IDs, and object IDs and stuff like that are, effectively instant. They take about a second, I guess. So, so um, you know, just keep that in mind. Not all of these are instant gratification uh, outputs, but most of them are. And a lot of the ones that are, I think, are super useful and like the depth map that we'll really be playing with today is uh, quick to generate. So with that in mind, let's play around with these and see what we can do. So the first thing I kind of want to do is mess around with the diffuse one, and I want to add the glossy to it and see if I can kind of recreate the image. And I'll also bring in the, the specular so she can have some eyeballs. So let's bring in these three images to play with. Let's see if I can give her her eyeballs. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to go to my diffuse and paste as new layer and then we're going to set this to multiply no lighten could be it see which one of these blending methods works the best. Looks like Layton is going to be it, or Screen. Mm, difference could work. Exclusion could work. Um, so either Screen, I would say, or Layton. Looks like if we zoom, oh. looks like if we zoom in, screen showing more of the eye. All right, well, we're going to go with light, and I think that looks. Hey, I'm just playing around here like the rest of you people. We're experimenting today. Probably something that millions of people have done already. I know it's something that millions of people have done already, but it's new to me, so I'm playing around. So that's cool. So we got that image now. So let's add another layer on top of it. So let's add my glossy now. So let's copy that and paste as new layer. We got the glossy. Now let's play around with. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's weird. So I'm just playing with different mixing modes now. Lighten. So if you're. That's kind of neat. So that's what we had before. And that's Lighten. Nifty. Let's try other things. Hue. <laughs> Saturation is kind of interesting because you're, you're only going to get color on the more reflective parts. 
of the image. So most things are black and white, and anything that has kind of a stronger reflection off of it has that, uh, has that actually has color. So that's kind of a neat effect. We have saturation legacy, color, similar effect, color legacy. We've got lumina, lumin, luminance. That's kind of neat. multiply that screen hmm, screen yeah dissolve overlay hard light soft light difference oh that's funky dodge it's like amped up and burn Exclusion. So interestingly enough, if we use, say, Lighten, and let's just look at our other image here. Get something that's kind of similar to our original image. So, looks like we got more of a color cast here. Interesting stuff, though. So you can really mess around with this, and uh, you know, kind of. We could now mess with the masks and just cre recreate and do different things with the image. So that's pretty cool. So let's continue on this experiment here. So I'm going to close this stuff up. I'm going to drag in our original RGB image. And I'm going to mess with the, we'll do the distance map, mask, sorry, not map, because we're going to be using it as a mask. So this is interesting. You can kind of create a real depth of field sort of kind of thing, not really where things become out of focus, but th things become darker the farther away they are from the lens by using this mask. So we'll use Phoebe RGB. So this was our regular output, right? So we could add a mask to it. Now there's two different ways you can do this and they both should be functionally the same. If you have masking properties in your whatever thing you're using to edit with, whether it be the uh, a video editor or in my case, an image editor, usually you have masks. So we're going to add a mask from an image and we're going to use our distance mask. Click OK and then we get this. So now anything that is closer to the camera, you're, we're seeing more of it and anything that's further away, it's becoming more um, less opaque, more transparent. So we could just add in a Another layer here, we'll call this um, just BG for background, drag it to the, come on buddy, drag it there and we're going to fill it with black, as soon as I remember where my flood is, we're going to fill it with black. Now we have this cool effect, right? And that makes it a lot more dramatic looking, I think, and kind of makes for a better photograph. So you essentially have this kind of looks nice. This looks really cool. So that's some uh, something you can use the depth mask for. You can also use it for if you had a whole scene, um, instead of just black here, you could use um, like a fog image or something or a gray mist, right? And you could blend that in slightly so that things further away from the camera are um, kind of have this foggy, misty effect to them. Uh, so that is, I think, one of the main reasons or main uses of this kind of um, output, this kind of mask. But, you know, just so you know, that's what it's used for. That's what it is. Pretty cool, right? Um, so let's continue to mess around. Oh, yeah, I'll show you 
Let me hit undo a bunch of times here. And I'll show you another simpler way to do it if you want. You could just take this guy, uh, the distance one, and we're going to do copy and we're going to go here and we're going to go paste as new layer. Okay, so I'm putting it on top so it's covering up our previous one. Now we're going to switch it over to multiply and boom, we get the same effect we did before without having to go through doing masks and creating a black background, stuff like that. It just becomes instantly what we wanted. So that's kind of a lazier, easier way to do it, I think. So we're just going to call this distance. Go on the distance. All right, cool. So let's play around some more, shall we? I am going to shut him off for now. I'm going to take our glossy layer, paste as new layer. No, no, no. Control Z. I don't know what I'm doing. I am. I want to copy, go over here, and then paste as new layer. Okay. Glossy. I'm just going to move this down between these two. So right now my distance thing is off, as if it didn't exist. So we're just messing with the glossy effect right now. And if I turn that off, you would see we'd have our regular image. Now we can play around with what this glossy thing can do. So let's just go through our different um, styles here, our different blend modes, and see what happens. So darken doesn't really do much. So we have normal, darken, we have lighten, nothing really. Hue, that's interesting. Hue legacy, we got saturation. Again, pretty interesting, right? Because the um, kind of, we've kind of already seen this stuff. We kind of already did this before, right? So you know the, you know the deal. So we kind of already messed with this. Um, I tell you the one I like though is soft light mixed with it. I think that looks pretty cool. It's almost like just jacking up the contrast uh, quite a bit, but I think it works a little differently and it looks a little nicer than had we done that. So now we could kind of we could create um, mix that and add our distance one back in there, and we could make something like that. Okay, granted it's dark, we could lighten it up then, but pretty cool nonetheless. Our original image was fairly dark. What happens if we, let's play around with this guy. What else do we have? Difference. Dodge is kind of interesting too. So Dodge is kind of like, let me shut this distance one off. So Dodge is kind of like amping up our highlights. So if you use difference, right, it's basically, it's taking all of the highlights back out of the scene. So it's almost like, um, should basically be creating something similar to our diffuse map. So that's kind of interesting. The opposite of that is this uh, dodge, right? So this is amplifying all of the bright spots, all of the reflections on our scene. So anything that, so anything that's bright is getting like twice as bright now. So that's kind of interesting, and we can combine that with our distance map and create something that looks kind of stupid. But hey, whatever. Maybe sometimes it doesn't look stupid. I don't know. Nifty stuff. So it's just playing around. You can do a lot of different things with this, not just 
what I'm showing you other than, you know, you can use these for genuine masks. And if you know how to use masks inside Photoshop and things like that, you can kind of start to wrap your head around the possibilities of the, the neat things you can do with this. Um, you know, for instance, if I did the distance thing as a genuine mask, So if I did the distance thing as a genuine mask here, we get this cool transparent thing, right? So then if we brought in another image, so now that we have this masked out, we could use an image like this chain here and do cool things with it. So let's uh, do copy. Go back to here and I'm gonna paste this as a new layer. And we could stick that as the background layer, and that looks kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, if you wanted it to look even better, we could do something like slide it up the top here, and we can use Lighten. And this looks good, except the chain placement's kind of not great. So I'm going to just go over here and slide this over, something like that. And then we could trim off what we don't want. Boink. And now we have a really interesting image, right? Now I do notice that her hair is kind of pixelated and that was because of our mask here. Um, if we look at our distance mask, the hair is kind of very pixelated. It's easy enough to fix though. Um, I'm going to select that mask and I'm just going to go use my smudge brush and I'm just going to smoosh it around a little bit. And that fixes that. There we go. Just like that, we've used our masks to create something cool. And of course, you know, if we didn't have this mask, this is what it would look like. And it's a lot less dramatic, right? You know, even if we had a black background, it's going to look not, a, not nearly as dramatic. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities with these different masks. And I urge you to play around with them. Uh, I'm not really a graphic artist so i'm not super up on what can be done with these but you can see just by my playing around there's a lot of opportunity for you so i urge you to you know use if you have the ira plugin to mess around with some of these see what you can do and just note that um, you can do this from iclone as well so this is, we did it from Character Creator, but you can do it from iClone as well. So you can render the scene and you can actually render um, a movie out in any of these. And then in your, your video editor, you can do these same type of effects to do whatever you want with them, really. Um, I did something very simple as a test with the opening that you saw with uh, Kayako. Uh, walking towards us. And I was just using a depth mask. So when she was far away, she, those frames were completely masked out. And as she came closer, she was in that depth range that we, you know, set here. And she started to get more and more visible um, as she went towards the camera. Um, as somebody pointed out, of course, you could do something like that with just setting up your lighting properly, but, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be the same effect. Uh, it would be difficult to make it very gradual like that. Um, and also you can set the, the near and the far very close. So it was almost like you could have her almost like pop out of uh, the darkness suddenly, almost like coming out through a wall, something like that. So there, there's definitely benefits of using that that you couldn't get with just regular lighting effects. 
Now let me just show you one last thing before we go, and that is, you know, how to use those material ID and object ID masks. Um, so this is one way you could use them. Um, say I wanted just her genes to be, say, black. I wanted to take the saturation out of them. That would be a little bit difficult to do, especially because they're fading to black. So to try to select that right now with like uh, my magic wand thing would be difficult because, eh, yeah, it's just, it's just not going to really, it, it's going to be tough, going to be tough. You know, no matter what, no matter what selection I use, it's going to be really hard to try to just pick out the pants and her hands overlapping, it would be a, a pain in the butt, right? But with the magic of these masks, we can do it easily. So let's see how to do that. Uh, let's do the object, uh, object ID mask. So let's just take that and we're gonna copy it. And we're gonna go here and paste it as a new layer. We're pasting it on top just so we can see it and we can do stuff with it, but we're going to make it invisible once we've used it. So all we're using it is for a way of easily making a selection. So her pants are just this violet color. And now my little magic wand is easily able to just pick that out. And you want to set your tolerance real low with no feathering and no anti-aliasing and things like that. So it just picks up the pure color. So now that that's selected, we can hide this guy again, go back to our original image, and we can mess with this selection to our heart's content. So I can do adjust, and I could go to hue, saturation, and lightness, and I could take the saturation down on the genes, press OK, and get rid of my selection. And just like that, we've changed our pants to black, and it was a lot easier to select using that. Um, similarly, say we wanted to change her belt buckle to like a gold color. Now in the object ID mask, uh, we don't have that, but we do have it in the material mask. There's a separate zone for her belt buckle. Um, so let's just use that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back into our thing here and I'm going to paste it as a new layer. And we're just going to use our magic wands. Just do that as a selection. Um, hide it again. Go back to our base color. And now I could do something like um, colorize. And I've already got it set here with the, my hue and everything. Press OK. Deselect. And now she has a gold belt buckle. And we didn't have to do any kind of fancy trying to do a selection on a weird texture style of thing. Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And of course, I've just scratched the surface of what you can do with these masks, but I urge you to play around with them and see what else you can do. But you can see how useful they could be in post-processing an image and and uh, saving yourself some trouble in maybe re-rendering a whole iRay image when you just want to make a simple adjustment to a certain part of that image or adding, you know, nice effects to the image like this depth effect, changing colors to certain areas, things like that. So I'll, I think I'm done here. So I will catch you guys later in the next video. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Have a great day. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.